Hello, I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 88. We're going to go through another offset example today, similar to what we did last time. If you remember last time, our data was in rows, and this time our data is in columns. So we're going to use offset to get uh, data going a different direction. And then obviously I have a little bit different kind of chart here, just for those of you who are interested. The chart type is an area chart, just the first basic area chart, and it fills everything beneath the line. We'll click OK to that, and we're good to go. So the question is, how do we use offset to capture data that's going in columns, B, C, D, E, F, as opposed to in rows like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? And it's uh, fairly straightforward to do. What we're going to do is I'll show you the, the formula right down here. Uh, maybe just that much so you can still kind of see the graph and see what the formula is. So we're going to do offset, and we're going to name this offset formula collections. So if you come up here and we go to formulas and name manager here's collections right there and here's the same offset formula that we're going to analyze here and as you've come to expect once we get this to work what we're going to do is we're going to go to design and select data and if you look at the data there you can see the name of the, of the, the tab or the worksheet it's columns and collections is the name of the series value so the question is what's collections and how do we make that work I'll show you Let's scroll down and get this detail here. The name is collections. Remember, there's five things we're looking for. We're looking for the reference, the rows and columns, the height and the width. Well, the reference is columns B2. We're going to start the data for the chart right here at B2. And that's our reference. That's our anchor. And we don't need to move anything up or down, left or right from B2. We've set it up right where we want it. So rows and columns are both going to be zero. The next one, height is zero because I only want it to be one row high. My data is going this way, so it's only one row high. And then what I need to do is figure out how many columns I need to include. Over here, here's the other trick that you need to see in uh, Excel Video 88. Remember in the last chart, what we had was we counted from the rows tab and we went from B2 to B13. We went from here because we knew our data would never go past B13 because after December, we, that's the end of the year and that's when we're going to stop this graph. Here, my data can go on to 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13. And so we don't know how far this data is going to go. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to use the same count function, but we're going, to, we're going to do it like this. See, let's slide this out of the way. We're going to count everything in the columns worksheet. I'm in columns. And see this dollar sign two, dollar sign two. What I'm doing is saying count as many numbers, because count is going to return how many cells there are with numbers in them in row two. So if I mean it's going to, it'll go all the way out to here. It'll go on forever. And um, let's see, I can close that thing there for you. The the trick is when you use count and count all these. Let me sh let, let's do a good one. Then I'll show you the one downside to it. Let's say we dropped a little bit. Four fifty four, three thirty two eight. It'll easily do 2009 for me, and it'll keep updating on our way out. The challenge is, watch what happens if I delete that, and if I put a number out here, the number 6. See what happens is, Excel says, okay, come down here, show me how many numbers there are in row 2. So it goes out and says, well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and any screwy number out here, all, I mean, way, way, way off the screen out there, is going to screw you up if you're not careful. So what you want to do when you use this count and just make sure you only get what's in uh, the second row is to make sure you don't have any garbage out there, any stray numbers out here that are going to screw up your count function. Because all count's doing is looking in row 2. Remember over here we said, all right, look from B2 to B13 and count those. Over here we're saying you just look and find as many in row, in row 2 as you can so that as we keep adding 2011, 12, 13, 14, we can just keep adding numbers along here. This time we'll let it go up. 09833, hit enter. It will keep going and going and going because as long as there's space in, in row two, it will this count function where it's looking for the number of cells with a value in it in row two will just keep going and going and going. It's a clever trick. You just need to make sure you don't have any stray data out here or it'll screw you up. That's what I wanted to show you in Excel video 88. We're doing the same type of thing. We're looking for the anchor point. Where's the reference? That's where my data starts, right here in B2. How many rows and columns do I need to move from B2? I don't. I'm right where I need to be. 
what's the height of my data, no matter how far out this goes, the height is only one cell high. And then the width needs to be as many non-zero cells as it finds out here. It won't find this one in row two because collections is not a number and count is only looking for numbers greater than zero. That's the trick to making this collections chart work. It's going to get a little more complicated from here. Stay tuned.